What's up guys? Welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. We've got a really awesome video for you today. So many people have been asking about this one. We're here with the all new Skytrack Plus. So let's talk real quick about the original Skytrack. So some data from Skytrack. They actually have sold over 70,000 of those original units. All right, that is a lot. And it's actually over 300 million shots have been hit with that original unit. You can say this unit was very popular. And you know, for over 10 years, this thing was being sold. It, you know, really kind of accommodated to a lot of home users. The way that it could measure a ball within a few feet did not require any, you know, length of space. It didn't require you to have a very smooth surface for putting in a long distance. Uh, if you could basically safely swing a club, you could use a Skytrack. And that really attracted a lot of users. Now, there may be a few downsides that I've heard from people. Uh, you know, you do have to place the ball directly on that laser dot that they have. And then, you know, there is a small shot delay after you hit the ball, there is a little delay. But I also find people that actually know that that can come to a benefit to them. Maybe they're using a TV off to the side, they hit their shot, by the time they look over, it's taking off. So I've kind of heard, you know, a lot of mixed things. but. My own personal experience, as you've probably seen in the channel, I've tested that original unit quite significantly. And you know, I have to say, it puts out some really good data. Now, do I have maybe a miss here or there? Yes, I've experienced it. Um, you know, did I not place the ball perfectly? You know, who knows exactly what could cause those. But what I did like is, is that if it were to miss, it just missed completely and it just didn't give me bad data. But I was getting some really good data out of the original Skytrack. I've put it through all the paces. If you haven't seen those videos, check it out. And you know, you should be interested to know that if you don't have a launch monitor and you're shopping for one for the first time, they're actually going to continue to sell the original Skytrack. Now, the new Skytrack Plus is going to be a higher price. It's actually going to be $29.95, but it's going to come with a lot of new features. So, Golf Tech actually acquired the Skytrack brand, and talking to them, it sounds like they actually have some aspirations to really kind of integrate the technology in the Golf Tech spaces for fitting and lessons and things along those lines. So, they have a new dual Doppler radar for club data measurement. This is very interesting. So it says it delivers useful club data, including club head speed, smash factor, club path, and face angle. Additionally, applying proprietary machine learning algorithms to that data delivers a, a precision at a level matched only by the highest end launch monitors on the market. So I don't know if all those data points are being measured by the Doppler radar, if that's what they're stating there, if they're using some of that machine learning algorithm in order to, you know, kind of calculate some of it or not. Um, you know, but it sounds like from what they're saying here that the radar is reading, you know, all of that club data that they need to come up with those, you know, club data readings. So that very interesting, uh, you know, that they're able to do that. And this is a whole new thing for Skytrack. So before you were only getting, you know, ball data for the most part, other than I want to say club head speed. And now you're able to get all of this useful data like club path and face angle, very powerful stuff. Now they also have improved photometric camera system uh, that actually delivers better accuracy. So the improved camera system gives golfers highly accurate and reliable ball tracking data that can power a player's practice and improvement. The camera system also provides for improved outdoor performance on mats. So now you can work your game at the range. So this was something that I actually heard a lot of people mention. They weren't able to take their Skytrack outdoors. The sunlight can interfere and cause a lot of misses, so it was primarily an indoor unit. But now they have a new technology and new camera system that allows you to do that. Now it does specifically stay say on a mat. So you're not gonna be putting this out in the grass and using it on the grass. You're not going to be getting that level of accuracy. I mean, could it work potentially? Maybe we'll do some testing for fun, but they're stating that it needs to be used on a mat, all right? So they did all kinds of different studies that you can go through and I believe they're gonna be providing to the public where they put this you know, Skytrack Plus up against other launch monitors and essentially is telling them that they had a variance of a very, very small percentage over all these shots, you know, compared to high level, you know, tool, tour level launch monitors to the Skytrack Plus. So interesting uh, how they did that. I'm very excited to try it and we'll do a full unboxing here and testing in a second. I just want to provide all this information to you guys. So they're still, uh, you know, pairing up with E6 Connect, WGT, the Golf Club 2019, Creative Golf 3D, Fitness Golf. So all those, you know, simulation, you know, third party software that you're used to seeing with Skytrack is going to be available. And now they actually have uh, the well-known software, you know, packages that you're used to inside of the Skytrack uh, software itself, 
you know, the skills assessment, bag mapping, the practice randomizer, the wedge matrix, you know, some really cool features inside of the SkyTrack software, but now they have a new and improved shot optimizer interface. So this actually allows you to view and analyze all of your club data and ball data versus optimal conditions. So it'll actually show you a red, yellow, uh, or green scoring system that allows you to know how close your numbers are to the best players in the world which I think is really cool. So you'd be able to hit some shots and if you see your launch angle is lower than the recommended, maybe you could work on raising your launch angle up. We'll be able to demonstrate that to you guys. And then there's also a new shot scoring process. All right, so this is interesting. You hit 20 shots uh, with any club and SkyTrack will crunch the numbers to determine your best shots. All right, this is now your expected distance for that club. Now from that point forward, your shots will be measured against expectations and you'll be given a shot score, an objective way to measure you against similar shots of different levels of players and giving you a score of what you'd expect to shoot in an 18 hole round. Very interesting. I'm actually uh, kind of excited to test that out and see how that all plays and you know what kind of shot score you know they're uh, providing for different, you know, uh, I'd say handful of shots that you're hitting, but um, you know, that's pretty cool. Now, other key improvements that you should understand, they are stating that there's a 40% larger hitting area. Now I mentioned that you had to place the ball right on that dot. So it's 40% larger. Now, I don't know how much bigger that's really gonna be because 40% of a dot is probably pretty small. We'll have to test that and show you guys here in just a second. They do have a new onboard processor. They're, sh they're saying that they can actually uh, have that shot delay be less now, uh, and it also gives them a secure, uh, secure connectivity to a wider range of PC and mobile devices. So I'm um, definitely gonna show you guys that shot delay and see what it is now. They added five gigahertz Wi-Fi capabilities for faster and uh, more stable connectivity. I liked seeing that. USB type C charging options for port sta uh, stability and rapid charging. I love seeing USB-C, that's becoming the you know, worldwide standard, so it's nice to see that that's integrated. You don't need any special balls. Um, I always recommend on a unit like this, you place that logo towards the ball, but maybe we'll test both ways to see how it does. But no stickers are required on the ball, no markings, and also no stickers on the club. So that tells you they're using that radar to see the movement of the club. They're not actually looking at you know, what you call like a fiducial where a camera would track something on the club. All right, so I mentioned the price, $29.95. It's already on pre-sale. If you guys are interested in purchasing the unit, you know, I'd be more than happy to connect you with my partners. Make sure you shoot me an email. I'll pin it down in the comments and maybe I'll even just put a link for you guys down there. Um, you know, anything like that always helps support the channel and I appreciate it. But let's get to our unboxing. I'm just gonna go ahead and set our iPad down and let's get this thing opened up. I hope that wasn't too much for you guys, but I feel like information like that is just really important to go over um, so there's no confusion of what's new, um, you know, things you need to understand about new features, everything along those lines. So this thing comes wrapped in a bunch of cellophane. We're going to get this off real quick. Perfect. Right on the front it says practice, play, compete. Charge your SkyTrack before first use. Download the SkyTrack software. It's available uh, both PC and iOS and, and Android. A lot of Android users ask me that question. It is available for Android. Connect, choose from SkyTrack's direct Wi-Fi connection through the network mode uh, via your home network or via USB connection. And then play. Start your SkyTrack experience and take your game to the next level. They have a uh, quick start guide for you know uh, help right there. You can just scan a QR code, which is pretty cool. Let's get this SkyTrack out of here. And let's show this thing to you guys. I'm gonna bring it up nice and close. So there is the all new SkyTrack Plus. So it is a wider unit, I noticed right away. It actually has kind of like a grip material back here. Um, it's not rubber, it is kind of like a plastic material. You'll see back here, you have your power button. We'll open this up so you guys can see it's USB-C. And then up on top, you have power indication, Wi-Fi, and then a check mark, which I'm assuming is when it's ready to hit. And you can see up here your laser aperture. So still using a laser, you know, to show the indication of where to place the ball. And then down on the bottom, they actually have some screw mounts for various things. I know a lot of people would always ask, you know, uh, what are those used for? Well, I'm actually going to show you a case that they're selling. All right. Give me just a second to unbox that as well. But we want to see what else comes in with the main SkyTrack unit, and then we'll get this thing set up and we'll do some testing. So in this box, it says instructions, charging block, and USB cords. 
So pretty simple stuff. And it looks like it's actually open on the end, so you don't even have to really open it up like I am, but we'll go ahead and do it that way. So what do you have here? You have quick start guide. You have a USB-C to USB-C. And then it looks like you have an additional PC to USB-C. All right, so it comes with substantial amount of cables, which is nice, um, makes it easy for connectivity. I know that I like doing a USB connection. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's simple. You don't have to deal with any type of, you know, connectivity issues if your Wi-Fi is acting up. And then a charging block, just a simple charging block. But I wanna put this off to the side and I wanna open up the protective case that you can get for the SkyTrack Plus. Now, I've never used a protective case on the original SkyTrack. Um, I just felt like, you know, odds of shanking a ball were so minimal. Um, even if I did, you'd have to shank it so hard that I just wasn't that worried about it. So I never went down that, that road. But, uh, you know, they have a, an excellent shank case here available for you. Let's take a look at it. So it actually looks really nice. Um, it actually has adjustable feet on it. So let's take a look at this case real quick. It goes right inside with your adjustable feet so you can level it, all right, which is really nice. And then the unit will sit right in and it comes with three little screws to screw in the unit on the bottom and you're good to go from there. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. I'll kind of show you guys how that looks if I put that in there really quick, just so you have an idea. I probably won't even run it inside the case, maybe just for demonstration purposes, but you can see it slides right in there. You have screws right on the bottom and then the unit is protected, all right? I mean, I'm sure if someone was willing to hit a fast enough drive with a big enough shank, maybe you could still cause damage, but I think this thing is gonna keep you pretty safe overall. So that's a full unboxing of the all new SkyTrack Plus. Let's get this thing set up and give you guys an overview and some first look shots with the all new SkyTrack Plus. What's up guys, welcome back inside the GSV studio. We have our SkyTrack Plus all set up and ready to go. And there's something I wanted to point out to you guys right away. So if you look back in the old videos with the original SkyTrack, I actually had the unit probably several inches closer to the ball in order to have my dot kind of close to the center. Well, this dot is in the center. And I'm, like I said, probably a little over two inches from this line. I kind of had it hanging over that line before. So you're gaining distance from the unit to the ball. And I wanted to point that out. But I know you guys want to see this thing in action. We've got it connected with the USB-C cord to our PC, the latest SkyTrack software so we can look at club data and the optimizer. I'm not going to cover everything in this video. I'll give you guys a first look, but make sure you stay tuned. We'll be covering a lot more in the future, all right? So subscribe, you know, like this video, comment below any questions you have, things you'd like to see. I appreciate all that. But let's go ahead and open up our practice section because that's going to have everything we want to show you guys. Shrink our camera down. That way we're not blocking anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and shrink this thing down. I think I could probably put it up here so you can see carry. And down in the center bottom, see where it says shot detail? We're going to open that up and that way you guys can see everything. Yeah, I can gain a little bit, I think, on the camera there. You'll still be able to see launch angle and carry. There we go. Try to give you guys at least a decent view inside the studio. But now you have club path, face to path, face to target. You've got your uh, launch angle and backspin and descent angle with the optimization color tiles. That's cool. Over on the right, it says undefined. We're going to select eight iron. You'll see that the shot score down there kind of goes down because I actually hit a couple shots already. So um, I like this graphical depiction, how it has face to target and then club path, but it also has a side view with launch angle and backspin. So um, I kind of like the top view showing the face to target and uh, club path, just an easy way to reference. But let's go ahead and take some shots and see what you guys think. So I've just kind of got it in the area of the dot. It's probably, a, let's call it a half inch below the dot or, or uh, behind the dot or so. All right, I know that it's got a little bigger hitting area, so it shouldn't have to be right on that dot. And let's see if we can actually work this ball maybe a little bit left to right and see how that club data reads. I don't think that started. Yeah, that's not bad. I was going to say it started a little left of center, not quite as much as I'd like, and it did work back to the right, so I'll take that. Yep, yeah, see my uh, launch angle is actually just a little bit almost too high. Uh, they're saying optimal range would have been 15 to 23. I'm generally around that 22 to 23 range, um, but you'll see my club path was just a little bit outside, face to target, 
0.7 open and I got that little fade I was working with. So I caught that just a tiny bit behind the ball. That's why it kind of threw me off. You can see my spin number was down a little bit to where I'd like to be. So I'd like to be upwards of 7,000, around 7,000. That's my spin on an eight iron for a good shot. I definitely don't get up to that 8,600 range, but I do get to that 72, 73. So it's cool to see that is in the optimal range. Now let's try to hit one more. That way we know, I'm going to see if I can maybe get this working uh, a little bit further left to right. Now that one I think is going to, yeah, it's going to push over to the right. It kind of started in the center. You could see it hit the center of the screen, left the face a little open, ball works to the right. But I, I hit that well. Notice that the spin is now getting up towards that optimal range and I'm still in my optimal range on launch angle. Um, you know, not quite hitting the green numbers, but uh, you know, within, you know, small amounts. And then my descent angle, because I kind of flighted that up, was actually a little, little steep. So it's actually getting outside of the optimal range on descent angle. So let's kind of hit just a more of one of my square shots. And I'm actually going to leave this an inch or so behind the dot this time. That's where it's at. So we'll see how that reads. Now I do see a little bit of a delay here. I don't know if we've really picked up a whole lot of speed from at post shot to when it takes off flying. Let's pay attention to that. Caught that just a tiny bit heavy. All right, more of like a straight shot. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm definitely seeing a little bit faster take off. Now look at that spin shoot way down when I catch that a little bit heavy got the descent angle launch angle you know back you can see I kind of came just from the inside on that one was trying to hit a little more of a uh, straight shot picks up fine an inch behind the dot good to know so this time I'm gonna try to release that face just a little bit more try not to catch this thing heavy that was hit pretty well I think I closed the face down perfect a little more of like a straight shot so it's Good to see that's reading. I can see my carry was really nice on that. That spins in an acceptable range for me. I mean, that's not quite getting up there to where I'd like to be, but it's. I'm also, you know, it's tired late at night. I mean, I'm pretty happy with these shots so far, honestly. Um, all right, so now we need to see if we can get this ball to work right to left. You can see that that was pretty square for the most part. I do like how it shows those arrows. You can see that the, the pink line is your club path, and then the blue line is your face to target so it you know it shows you where those are moving I, I like that you know if you're giving an instructor i could definitely see you know uh i'm sorry if you're giving a lesson as an instructor i could see you being able to show that to your student and then be able to figure out what's going on there i also like the heat map that's showing up so it shows my ranges of uh the range of shots that i've hit and because i've hit some shots now my shot score i only have three shots left to have a shot score so that's kind of cool all right, let's see if we can get this working right to left. Definitely hit it right. Did I close it enough? I sure did. There it is, drawing back. Caught that a little heavy. Yeah, I'm catch, catching them a little bit heavy tonight. Where's that, 54? Yeah, it makes sense. Caught that a little bit heavy, but launch angle, descent angle, still in check. Inside out, 5.2 degrees, face to target, open 2.3. So nice draw, I still uh, got a lot of carry out of it. You know, anytime I tug a ball, it's always going to carry further. So let's try to hit one more of those. I'll try to hit this one a little more clean. Well, that's a thin shot, so how's it gonna read that? That should be a higher spinner. I saw the launch angle looked a little bit lower. I kind of lifted out of that a little bit. There you go. Look at that. Exactly what I expected. Because I hit that a little bit lower on the face, I'm always going to generate more spin when I'm hitting it just a little bit thin like that. And then my launch angle, yeah, sure, it was a little bit lower, but it's still it's saying it's within an optimal range. You know, a little bit of a thin to win on that situation. Uh, it says I only need one more shot uh, for my shot score. So let's hit one more shot. I'm interested to see what you guys think about the delay shot to ball taking off. I feel like it's improved, um, but I feel like it's obviously still noticeable. I wish they could get that maybe just a little more instantaneous. 
but you know if they're doing all of the measuring they're saying that's a lot just tried to hit a straight shot on that one pulled it just a little bit i hit it pretty clean though so it'll be interesting to see what the numbers are yeah it's a good shot 157 yeah that's my normal spin in that six you know six sixes you know seven thousand to you know seventy three hundred would be my good spin um so shot score it says that if i were able to hit eight irons like this all day long of course you have to hit all the other uh, clubs as well i could go out and shoot a 67. now i'm going to tell you guys right now i uh, i'm not shooting a 67 anytime soon but like i said if i were to hit all eight irons you know um, my expected distance it has up there that's really cool that it has that um, but comes down to driving putting you know not hitting a ball in the tree line um, <laughs> a lot of a lot of things in order to come up with that score but it's telling you your eight iron performance if all the rest of the game was performing in the same line that you could go out there and shoot a 67. Uh, that's pretty cool let's hit one more shot I'm going to try to work the ball left to right again. I just want you guys to know that, you know, uh, all this shot shaping is reading correctly. All right, hit just a little behind the ball, so you're probably going to see that thing maybe around 6,000, but what a good depiction right there of a nice fade. Yeah, look at that, 62.93. So pretty good ball overall. I have to say, guys, um, for a first look video at the SkyTrack Plus, I mean, we just came out here and we hit every single shot shape that, you know, you really need to hit. I'm obviously going to, you know, cover everything. So stay tuned for chipping and putting and driver. But I feel, feel like, you know, without making this a, too much of a marathon, we were able to talk about all the features that this thing offers, show you guys the unit, show you guys the first look at this, you know, new software with all of the data. You can see my shot score kind of went up a little bit there on that shot, um, probably based on the carry, you know, um, wasn't a, a perfect shot by any means, but it was okay. Um, so it's interesting how that adjusts every time for your shot. But pretty cool stuff. This is very powerful. It's going to take a lot of videos in the future, you know, to cover this stuff. That's why I want you guys to comment below what you'd like to see me cover. So, you know, comment below. I'll try to prioritize things depending on, you know, what people are asking for. And as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned. There'll be a lot more coming soon.